Super Mario World has these funny little things called Dragon Coins. Collect five within a stage, and you earn a 1-up. Uh, most of the time we ignore these because, well, they're just a 1-up in a Mario game. But in order to fully appreciate the design of a stage, I think it's important to take a look at how they're placed. So the first stage we have here is uh, Yoshi's Island 1. It's the first stage in the game, so we can expect it to set the tone for the rest of the game in terms of design, and it, it doesn't let us down. The dragon coins here are set on a linear path that parallels the path of the stage. In other words, the path forward that the stage wants us to go on is the path that contains dragon coins. Uh, it also espouses the values of the stage design, and that uh, in order to access this dragon coin, we need to be big. Small Mario cannot access this dragon coin, and as such, uh, the placement of dragon coins there um, emphasizes the stage's value of being large and collecting power-ups. Um, just as dragon coins are valued but not required, um, being powered up Mario is valued by the stage, but not required in order to clear it. Um, so basically, it, it helps to highlight what the stage design is going for. Uh, you want to be big, but you don't need to be. And that's a pretty basic lesson, but it is the first stage of the game. Uh, what we have here is a moon. Uh, it mimics the secret exit design within the game in that uh, there's no way you can get that moon the first time you play the stage. You need to have a cape, and you can't get a cape until the second world of the game. Um, and so there are some parts in Super Mario World where you'll just need to go back and find something that was previously under your nose. Um, and that's mimicked by that there moon. What we have here is Valley of Bowser 1. Uh, all the coins here are in little dead ends, just like that dead end I went down there. Um, and this is evocative of the, of the stage's maze-like design. It's the end of the game, and the game wants to fool around with, uh, with the notions that it's built up. It wants to challenge the player, make the player think in, in new ways. Um, make this, it, it, the result this has is that the player is uncomfortable on Bowser's turf. Um, the best example of this is that we're running to, into a bunch of big moles here. We've seen small Monty Moles throughout the game, and they're no problem. You can use any number of attacks on them to defeat them. Uh, but these Mega Moles are invincible to most of Mario's attacks. Um, it makes us feel rather uncomfortable and out of place as opposed to the rest of the game. The Midpoint and 3-Up Moon in this stage are also placed on, on similar dead ends, uh, which devalues the 3-up moon and, and places a higher value on the midpoint than we're used to, uh, the midpoint is just supposed to say you're halfway through the stage, uh, but instead it's hidden away. Um, it's almost a secret for the player to find. It, it's possible to miss the midpoint, which is a rarity. Um, and then the midpoint, uh, and then the 3-up moon is right next to the midpoint, um, as opposed to having to find some secret hidden path uh, it's just as well hidden as anything else in the stage. So the value of these items is being reassigned, um, and the notions the players could become comfortable with uh, are just thrown out the window. Um, here we have Vanilla Dome 2. This has a secret exit. Um, it's a secret exit that leads to a red switch palace. Uh, meaning, if you take the secret exit, you're going to have to come back and do the normal exit, because after the Red Switch Palace, you can't go anywhere else. Um, the normal exit is the only way to progress within the game. Um, it's also a unique stage in that it's the only st stage I've found so far that highlights the presence of its secret exit. Um, most stages with secret exits, the Dragon Coins will be on the path to the normal exit, uh, and the secret exit will just be on some deviation there. Um, most secret exits don't have their own individual path. They'll instead be some pipe that you missed, or something like that, um, that are just along the way. Uh, if you need any proof of this, look at the secret exit to Donut Plains 1, where it's really just literally above the, the main goal. So what we're seeing here is that in order to collect all the Dragon Coins, you need to go towards the normal exit. Uh, and now I'm heading back from the normal exit. Um, 
and now I'm checking out this pipe. Uh, but the dragon coin, the last dragon coin, is not down this pipe that the my player might take on their way to the normal normal exit. Um, instead, after going to the almost to the normal exit, it's just to the right of me here. Uh, the player has to traverse all the way back to the left and take the secret exit. Uh, what this does is it makes the player feel as if they haven't fully completed the stage unless they've found both exits. Uh, well, one should also note that you must collect the dragon... the the last dragon coin the player must collect is on the path to the secret exit, because once you fall down in this pit, you can't get back out. So that has to be the last dragon coin you get. You can't get the normal exit at this point uh, unless you have a cape. Um, this stage is a bit funny in that sense. Uh, why don't all two exit stages place dragon coins that lead you to the secret exit? I'm not entirely sure. That stage in particular make, feels uh, unfinished unless you go out of your way to collect all five dragon coins. Here we have the final ghost house of the game, the Valley Ghost House. There are seven dragon coins here overall. I think it's possible to collect six. You may be able to get all seven, I'm not sure. Um, simply because once you collect five dragon coins within a stage, none of the others will spawn. Um, and by virtue of the dragon coin layout, you can only manipulate it to collect five, or six. Ah, and the last one won't spawn. Um, what we see here is that in order to collect uh, five dragon coins at all, uh, you need to take some wrong paths within this stage. Uh, if you head straight for the goal, you, you will not collect five dragon coins. You'll only end up with uh, three or so. Um, what this does, it, it conveys the sense that in order to truly complete the stage, you need to feel lost within it. And that makes sense. The stage is going for uh, losing the player. Um, there are many doors here, and they all lead to the same place, so the player is going to be a lot of doubling back over old territory. Um, and by forcing the player to double back in order to collect five dragon coins, uh, the dragon coins sort of mimic the, the stage's sense of, uh, of being lost. So uh, I hope that serves as a helpful proof of how to look at dragon coins. Uh, they're sort of an extension of the of the stage's design. Uh, if you want to, if you're looking at a stage and you're not quite sure how it works, uh, think about where the dragon coins are placed, and that'll show you what sort of uh, what sort of challenges it values the player performing or uh, clearing. I'm sorry. See you later.